Here are my disclosures again. The first thing I want to say is that when you think you have an osteal flush occlusion or an osteal occlusion without a stump, uh, please uh, define what you want to achieve. And I think the question that we all face clinically in this difficult situation is that we, of course, want to restore flow to the superficial femoral artery, but we do not want to compromise the profunda femoris. Is that right? That makes sense. Second is, we want to do it in a way that we don't absolutely have to place a stent, and that can be difficult because some parts of the structure of the stent may actually extend into the common femoral artery, complicating our life not only during that procedure and, of course, in the, in the near future. So those are the two objectives. Now, my most important comment here is that before you call something without a stump, please confirm and I think there are multiple simple strategies that I can share with you that will reassure you or confirm that there is, this, is, this is truly a no-nub or flush occlusion of the osteolus FA. The first is to optimize your angiogram, as I have suggested, that the injection is better done in the common femoral artery instead of doing an aortogram and trying to pan and, uh, and trying to move orthogonal angulation, that, that means ipsilateral uh, uh, angulation is very, very important, and uh, lateral projection angiograms can be very useful. Also, please uh, pay attention on calcification trails and late filling of the SFA. Sometimes it can happen at multiple levels along the course of the artery. Now, here are a few examples. On your left is a uh, angulation where uh, the, in an AP view or a PA view, it seemed like to be an SFA without a nub, but if you went ipsilateral lateral, about 30, 40 RAO, the nub suddenly shows up and that provides you with the guidance of how to deal with this artery further. The second tip I can give you is that sometimes when you cannot define the SFA ostium in one, on one side, if you take a picture on the contralateral side, it can actually be a mirror image, and that sometimes can give you some guidance, especially if there are grafts, as surgeons will tell you, it will be medially implanted, and I think those guidances can be extremely important. Now, there are multiple ways to address a true without stump osteal SFA occlusion. I've listed a few, and I'm sure many of you can come up with a few more. A feeling for, with an angled catheter, especially a micro multipurpose, and feeling for the osteal groove is not an uncommon one. If you remember in the morning, Andrew Schmidt did a comment that could be frequently done. Uh, again, some people wire into the profunda and then use an intravascular ultrasound to locate where this potentially could be the ostium, and if there is any calcification, you can more aggressively go for that nub and then confirm that what you are feeling and where you are feeling is actually true, the pathway to the SFA. Uh, there are a whole host of options covered under point three that is retrograde and transcollateral approach, and again, many of my speakers uh, preceding me have already spoken extensively about this. Now, there are some recently, a more recently published literature on retrograde proximal SFA puncture. I want to share with you, and of course, the last one that we use in our laboratory uh, relatively commonly is the transcutaneous ultrasound guided approach for osteal flush SFAs. Now, this is the technique I want to share some examples of uh, from the list I've shared. This is a technique uh, that was published in 2014. I used this publication because it had better images. There is a more recent update of this publication in 2016. And in this, the Japanese oper operator uh, actually uh, punctured in a flush occlusion uh, the uh, proximal superficial femoral artery with a micropuncture. You can see the red wire. It goes first besides the contralateral place sheath. But he was able to direct it into the sheath and use that wire guidance from retrograde with an O18 system is to uh, funnel or uh, push the catheter in and deeply engage what would now be truly the SFA. And then once that is done, you can use any wire or loop wire strategy with a supported with a catheter to recanalize the SFA and be truly in the true lumen of the SFA. So this is uh, very important. Fluoroscopically, the image is shown onto your right. Now, next is a transcollateral retrograde approach. We have done it a few times in our lab. And uh, if you go follow me from the left, uh, from your left to your right, the first is that if you inject the uh, common femoral or somewhere in the iliac artery, you will never be able to define enough collaterals to convince yourself that a transcollateral approach is even feasible. 
like in the coronary, using a selective O14 catheter, that is what we used, uh, we use, uh, we can better define the course of the collateral. Now, before I go on to actually wiring it, I must say that there are two purposes of going transcollateral. Sometimes you actually want to deliver a balloon and dilate, but in many situations we simply use it to target the distal vessel, and that gives you enough guidance for you to cross and integrate and be more aggressive about it. In this case, what I personally prefer to use is a fine cross catheter O14 and a Xion or Xion blue wire that can be passed retrograde. If you use to actually penetrate and puncture retrograde and you use a more aggressive wire after the microcatheter has been advanced over the softer wire. After you puncture, please remove that wire and use a softer wire again to extend forward. I think that would be a safer approach to keep the collateral protected and a microcatheter covering the collateral at all times. So in this case, a 014 quick cross catheter, Xion blue and a followed by a treasure 12 wire was used. This is the case that Erin, I shared with Erin, Erin showed it. I don't want to belabor the point, but I want to show here is that I actually thought this was a no stump SFA, ostium. And I did a RAO uh, oblique view, but when during the re-entry, when I went the other direction, I actually saw the nub. So I think what I wanted to show a no nub, but actually not a no nub, again goes back to reiterating my point that if you pay attention to extreme angulations, you can often define a nub which, is, which seems to be not present at the first. This is actually a true no nub where uh, there was an extreme amount of confusion what was going on in the ostium. There was 10 plays previously that is already partially occlu occluding or encroaching upon the profunda. The stent was fractured at multiple points, and this is my biggest nightmare. Stent fracture is a difficult thing to deal with and there are no good answers. In this case, we actually punctured through the stent and that provides an easier target and then go retrograde and complete the case. So that is again the case. What I want to spend a little more time that has not been talked about much in the session and uh, previously is a transcutaneous ultrasound guided approach. And I want you to take you through this. We have published this uh, uh, many times. Uh, and wrote, written about this, if you put an ultrasound on the common femoral artery, you can easily identify. There is going to be no guesswork at all. And believe me, uh, uh, you can identify the profunda, you can identify the common femoral artery, you can even see catheters and guide wires crossing it, and I want to demonstrate this to you using bilateral common uh, SFA occlusions in a very young man. So this is the same, this is a person who is very young, very active, he's got lifestyle limiting claudication. The panels to your left, the two panels actually show the diagnostic angiograms because we took multiple projections to clearly define that there was actually no nub. I couldn't tell where this SFA was starting. So let me take you further. So what we did was we placed a transcutaneous ultrasound on his uh, uh, right groin. We were able to clearly define the profunda femoris and also the occlusion of the uh, superficial femoral artery right above it. Uh, we then used a, a quick cross catheter, very radiolucent, as you can see. You can even, if you pay attention, you can even see at the last frame a wire being advanced through it to bring to the tip of the catheter. There is no secret here, is that right? We then used the, a guide wire to be advanced across the tip of the catheter. You can see clearly the angled guide wire being advanced. No secret again, and once the guide wire has been advanced, you can wedge the catheter in to the osteal SFA and be very, very comfortable that you are in the true lumen. You can again see that the first guide wire was escalated, and now, now we have an astato, uh, which is a 20-gram wire, and that is now used to penetrate the cap and supported by a catheter, and once it is done, the catheter can be freely advanced. You are very comfortable that you are in the true lumen, and that opens up options that otherwise you would not have if you would have gone subintimal. So uh, starting in the true lumen, even if you deviate and get into the subintimal tract, it puts you in a very good position to be very close to the false uh, to the true lumen. And here in this situation, although we were we ended up in the mid and distal SFA in the false lumen, because we started true, we remained very close and we were easily easily able to re-enter with an outback catheter and finish the case. In our lab, because you guys pay taxes and I'm in a VA, so I can burn it up, we use intravascular ultrasound all the time. Uh, we 
we here saw that we had a large dissection, and even though the distal part of the artery was not flow limiting, we then went ahead and placed a DCB after aggressively using angioplasty and DCB and completed the case with a short stent. If you can look just above the distal popliteal artery, you can see the small segment of the tigris stent placed there in, a, uh, in that area. The patient now has bilateralized, said now we are going to deal with his right groin, and you can see now is that we used a completely different approach here. So we again place the transcutaneous ultrasound here, but instead of using a, uh, a guide wire, we actually use the catheter, an angled catheter, uh, and a CXI, and a supported by a, by a microwire, but the microwire kept inside the catheter, and very, very easily under image guidance, extend this catheter and advance it through the SFA and complete the case. I don't want to belabor the point again, as you can see, Starting true lumen keeps you very close to the true lumen, and we were so close that we didn't even need to use a reentry device. We were able to use the last technique, just extend minimally the subintimal plane, re-enter the true lumen. This is after DCB and angioplasty. I can tell you that if you, even if angiography looks good, intravascular ultrasound will show you they have a lot of residual plaque, but because there is no dissection in this case, we decided not to put any more stents and completed the case. So if I have to summarize, the take-home message from my side is that if you have a flush occlusion of the SFA, don't believe it, first confirm. Uh, angulated views are extremely important. If you want to take the two of the four approaches that I suggest, an angled catheter approach, an intravascular ultrasound confirmation of the ostium where it is located, a retrograde approach, which my esteemed colleagues have, have outlined in great detail, I would not. And finally, the TUG or the TUG approach, where a transcutaneous ultrasound guidance can be used to completely take out the guesswork and, and, and cross through the true lumen. Thank you for your attention. We have actually published some of our work in the practical approach, also available on an iPad application and the website at xlpad.org. Thank you very much.